Uh, Blair, when you uh, alluded to the fact that most of your deals on the um, modules are subject to with a carry back, meaning you're going to give that seller some type of equity when you ca eventually cash out. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So when I'm making the calls, um, based on the old school thought of when Ron was teaching that only if there was a certain percentage of equity in it, say, you know, 80%, we would ask that subject to question. So what you're saying now is for me to understand, and the rest of us, I guess, you're asking that no matter what, that's just typically what you're going after, your type of deal. You know what I mean? You're just doing the subject to closing call. When Brandy gets a hold of that from Kevin, mm -hmm. you're, you're instructing her basically do subject to and then figure it out from there. Yeah, if this is a terms deal and there's a mortgage on the house, we use yeah. the subject to closing call script. And if it's the free only... clear, are you still trying to do sub? If it's, it's free, so there's no mortgage. So how are you just buying it so, over financing then? Correct. But what if, yeah. when they say they want something back, like, no, you know, I want some, something down payment. <sighs> See, I'm getting... you, you gotta do, you gotta take the position that you're a transactional engineer. Okay. Subject two is one of literally 12, at least 12 ways to buy that we teach. It's okay. only one. Now, unfortunately, we run into this problem a lot because the, the marketing is geared towards buying subject to selling lease option, but we do everything. Depending on what the deal is and how it comes to you, you can turn it into a cash deal, a wholesale deal, a rehab deal. You do options down there. Uh -huh. um, you know, there you could lease option it and then do a sandwich lease. Um, there are all kinds of things you could do. You can create yes. a new note. Yes, but I was just going back to the module training, trying to understand Blair's footprint. I'm trying to really kind of mm -hmm. trying to copy that. So what I'm trying to be clear and understand is Blair, when Brandy's calling, or what are most of your deals? Is it what you're saying is the subject to with the carry back to the seller? Yes, yes? because most, uh -huh. most houses have a mortgage on them. Correct. I think maybe uh, it would be good to just really get super clear on the mechanics of the deal so that you can understand when we say subject to, that just means that we're taking title to a house subject to an existing mortgage that's already on the house. Mm -hmm. If there's no mortgage, then there's nothing to be taken subject to. So it becomes an owner finance deal. Yes. Correct. And that's okay. just the terminology we use. Okay. So when I'm doing these subject twos and they have a mortgage on them and I'm reading it, Ron used to teach, you know, only if it's a certain margin. But what I'm trying to find out is you're just asking that subject to no matter what. As long as there's a mortgage on it, you're going subject to in first and seeing what happens I after. Think, I think you're confusing yeah. one of the terms. Um, subject to doesn't mean we're buying it for what they owe. It just means we're, we're taking title to it and not paying off their existing mortgage. We're just accepting responsibility to make payments on that mortgage. Is it, which closing call is it subject to though, right? Yeah. And then subject then say, well, two does not mean we're buying it for what they owe. Subject two just means title is transferring and we're accepting okay. responsibility to pay on All right. Money. And say that they want their equity and then you, so how would that call? Let's role play. So you're in the middle yep. of the call and, you know, you're following the script and they say, well, wait a minute. I have, you know, $60,000 equity here. I want that right now, today. I want that up front. How would you go ahead and well, if you're using the, the closing call script and I don't have it in front of me, so I'll just paraphrase, but you're essentially asking them, what's the lease you could take for the property? And if you're within 35,000, if their asking price from the opening call is within 35,000 of what they owe or 15%, whichever way you want to look at it. But if it's a small amount, what they're asking over what they owe, you're going to ask that question, would you sell for what you owe? Right. If they say yes, great. The only thing left to discuss with them is the mortgage is going to stay in their name temporarily until you get them cashed out in the future. Okay, perfect. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, got it so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but let's say we that we don't that or maybe we ask them, will you sell for what they owe, and they say no, or their asking price is so far over what they owe, like they're asking a hundred, but they only owe thirty. We're not going to ask them, will you sell for what you owe, because it's a dumb question. Right. And potentially offensive. Not that I care about offending them, but it can hamper the conversation. So if they want a hundred and they owe 30 on it, and in the script, you'll see this, you just kind of play and do a little mental math. Okay. So you need a hundred for the property. 
and you owe 30 on it. So that makes a difference of about $70,000, give or take. Uh, well, would it be okay if we just, you know, work that our usual way and pay you that when we cash out? And if they say yes to that, you've just negotiated a $70,000 seller carryback with no payments, no interest, and no balloon, which is like the best terms you could ever get on a loan. Does that That's make sense? exactly so what I was looking for. That was the area I was like stuck right there. Yes. Yeah. That phrase that you That's just it. said, well, you know, would, would it be okay if... If we just work this our normal way, yeah, our we just pay way. you that whenever we cash out. Mm -hmm. okay. So then that $70,000 is a yeah. note. It's mm -hmm. a new note that's created when you buy the property. It's a note mm -hmm. saying you owe them 70 grand mm -hmm. attached to the property. So mm -hmm. if and when the property ever sells down the road, they mm -hmm. will get paid off. They're secured mm -hmm. against the property. But you're not making payments on that 70000 right. at all. It's not accruing interest. Well, that seventy thousand. No I know it's up on the top part of the contract, but down where the um, financing is, like the where it starts to paragraph things, you don't put anything there because you've already addressed it at the top as the as the carry back, right? If I remember how you did. It. <clears throat> so if we're buying it for what they owe, okay, let's say they owe seventy thousand on it, and they're asking a hundred, but we just ask them, would you sell for what you owe? And they say yes. Okay, great. Now our purchase price is seventy. They owe 70 on it, so there's nothing that we owe them after the sale. Mm -hmm. Correct. Words, there's no carry back. So we don't need to put, we don't need to fill out paragraph 2B. Right. Which is the, the financing paragraph. Now, if there was some amount that we owe them mm -hmm. after we buy it, and I'm not talking about the existing mortgage, we don't owe that to them, we owe that to their mortgage company. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So paragraph 2B only outlines the terms of the note between you as the buyer and them as the seller. It does not include the way I do it, where we're buying subject to the $70,000 note or 30,000 or whatever, and then the 70,000 of equity that we owe them. Mm -hmm. I keep those separate. Some people will do a wrap mortgage where they just wrap the whole thing, a $100,000 note from you to them. I keep it separate where it's, we're buying it subject to the $30,000 note we're creating a, a new and separate note for 70,000 with no payments, no interest, no balloon. That's uh -huh. what gets delineated in paragraph 2B.